Next up, we have Michelle Ramos Burkhart, a business executive. I understand our recent partner for Camp Research Center. Excellent. <laughs> Good morning. Before I get started here, I just wait. This is Sorry, cancer. Before I get started here, I, I feel like I just really want to come out and get something out right in the open before uh, before I get started. And you know, we are going to be spending the next ten minutes or so together. So I just want to get this out there. Full disclosure: there is something you all need to know about me, and that is I am an Ironman. <laughs> yeah, no, not the comic book story kind of Iron Man. I'm actually this kind of Iron Man. I see a couple of puzzled faces out there, so let me bring some of you up to speed with what this is. The Iron Man is one of the toughest endurance races to complete in the world. It's comprised of three things. You start off with a 2.5 mile swim, generally happens in a lake, a river, the ocean, you follow that up with an 112 mile bike ride, which is nowhere near as long as you rode, so probably not. people aren't as impressed. <laughs> and finally, it culminates in a 26.2 mile run, or for those of you who know, a marathon. So you complete all those three things together on the same day, at the same time, which generally takes between eight hours to 17 hours, depending on how fast you go, and that's an Ironman. So, when I finished my Ironman in 2010, in typical Ironman fashion, I got the Ironman tattoo on my shoulder. So that I could, yeah, see? <laughs> right? Impressive, right? I wanted to brag to the world about my accomplishments. Now, as you can imagine, it took a great deal of training to complete this. Uh, it required um, me to, what we call the triathlon world, get up the crap of stupid. <laughs> so that I could get all my training in before I went to work as an arts administrator running a dance organization. So I would train from 90 minutes to three hours, six days a week, and I did this for a period of about six months. I had to have my caloric intake dialed in, I had to have my sleep hours, massage hours, you name it. It all had to work together so I could accomplish three very important things. One, that I could stay vertical for that many hours consecutively. Two, that I could keep moving forward that many hours consecutively. And three, obviously, was to cross the finish line, which I did in 16 hours, two minutes, and 30 seconds. <laughs> Some of you are clapping. Some of you, I can tell, are just looking at me like, I'm cray cray. <laughs> Right? And you're asking, why? Why on earth would you put yourself through such pain, such torture, such anguish? You know what? I turn that question right back at you. And I ask you, why not? Why not? See, here's the thing. I didn't grow up being a jock. I was a dancer. I mean, hello, I'm speaking at an arts conference. Yeah. So. When I was five and I saw the Nutcracker, I told my mom, that's what I want to do. So sports, out of question. I mean, if you're a dancer, you can't go skiing, you can break a leg. You can't run on the track team, that shortens your hamstrings. Oh, and ice skating, what if you broke a foot? Oh my gosh. So for me, sports became something that I enjoyed by watching it on television, and I did incessantly. I mean, the Olympics at my house were like a national holiday, and I would spend weekends on Sundays with my mom in Mile High Stadium cheering on the Denver Broncos football team. And I secretly longed for that sweaty, mean, angry, tough girl swagger that ballerinas and we didn't have. <laughs> I mean, come on, let's face it. We in the arts, we're all very refined. Mm -hmm. We're cultured. We're neat. We strive for excellence. And we laugh in the face of mediocrity. But you know what the arts doesn't teach you? And I apologize for 
having to use this phrase, but I really did search for something that would be a little bit less offensive, and quite frankly, nothing sums it up the way this does. The arts doesn't teach us to be badass. <laughs> I said it, badass. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's like we hold on to this sort of persona, you know. The arts is important because it contributes to culture, it contributes to society and the betterment of it. It contributes to insert whatever word you want here. Because that's really what it's about. You know, we hold on to this sort of this idea that, you know, being a starving artist there is so much integrity and worth. And guess what? That isn't working for us anymore. It simply isn't. I don't have to tell you. You know, people have other ways to entertain and engage themselves. Thousands of them. Bazillions of them. And what I've come to find is that the, the artists and the arts organizations that are really pushing forward, really moving the field forward, are the ones who are willing to take a risk, willing to be reckless, and willing to do whatever it takes to be successful in their artistry. And now, you know, I know, risk is scary. Risk is unpredictable, risk is uncertain, risk is frightening, so are a lot of things. And that doesn't mean that we shouldn't do them, right? Now, I know a lot of you are probably saying, well, now, wait a minute. The arts are, we're, you know, we train hard, and we're disciplined, and we're tough. And I, and I completely understand, and I agree with you. Having been an artist, having a daughter who's an artist, I get it. But we have got to find another way to communicate to our audiences, because what the, our, our selling feature of, of making things better and making the world a better place is not fine anymore. I feel like we sort of are looking for this balancing place when we talk about creative ventures. I feel like we are trying to resolve this sort of mental instability of, okay, how do I get to be an artist and be strategic? Wait, how can I be an artist and have good business skills? How do I be an artist and, and, and be reasonable? I mean, I, 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 honestly, I, I, you know, I don't under, you know, we, we perpetuate this in our field. We perpetuate this in ourselves. Like, we would rather wear that badge of honor of being the martyr than we would be to be seen as being entrepreneurial and successful because somehow that makes us less of an artist. So, you know, I laugh because I think, gosh, if I had a dollar, for every time an artist came to me and said, but that's the way we've always done it. Huh. Or, what do you mean I have to run my organization like a business? I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares if you're doing the same thing that you've always done, and you're not touching me and reaching me. And by the way, your audience is changing every second I stand up on the stage. Your audience is looking and sounding different. Nobody cares if you're doing what they're doing over there, because Honestly, I could just go over there and see what it is they're doing. And quite frankly, nobody cares if you're doing sort of what you always have done because it's an egocentrist, self-driven thing, that thing you do. If you're just performing for yourself, what's the point, right? So when I talk about being risky and I talk about being dangerous, I'm not just talking about your artistry because sure, I've seen a lot of artists do really amazing things and really things else, things that I, I couldn't, even, I don't even understand what it is they're trying to do. But the, the point is, is that I think it takes more than just being risky in your artistry. I think you have to be risky in your own organizations and how you're staffing your organizations. You have to be able to get outside of yourself and outside of this box that we paint ourselves in as artists to really get an idea of how you're going to move forward. Take, for example, a dance company. A dance company decides it's going to set up shop in Idaho. Well, guess what happened when a dance company decided to do that? The whole world reeled. The, the whole dance community, what? What do you mean you're going to start a dance company somewhere outside of New York? Oh my gosh, that'll never work. I mean, what people in Idaho know about dance? Oh, what? Well, guess what? Guess whose dance company is sort of the model now for every other dance company around the country who's trying to figure out how can I be more like 
the guy in the middle of the potatoes in Idaho. You know, or the theater company that hired the executive director that, can I say it out loud? Doesn't have a background in the arts. <gasps> oh my gosh, how do you ever do something like that? Well, guess what's the, which theater company is doing the most provocative and the most exciting and the most out-of-the-box things because they have somebody who's thinking differently and who came from a different background. See, this requires something that is very difficult for artists to wrap their heads around. Anybody guess what that might be? One word. One word. I heard the little change over there. <laughs> the little change over there. Control. Because in order to be reckless, you have to relinquish control. And artists just simply aren't willing to do that. In fact, if any of you know one, could you introduce them to me? Because in my 20 years of being in this industry, I have yet to meet one. So you have to be able to push the detonate button. You have to be willing to get outside of yourself. You have to be willing to do something that you think you wouldn't normally be willing to do. And again, I'm not talking about the artistry. I'm talking about in other areas of your business and other areas of your life. So 10 years ago, I saw the Iron Man on television. And here's what I saw. I saw a whole group of people who were there to accomplish a goal. There was the 80-year-old nun who, it was the 15th time she was doing the race. There was the Iraq veteran who was coming back with one leg to compete in the race. There was the 40-year-old stay-at-home mom who started off wanting to just lose a little weight and got so excited and compelled to go through the process of the training, she decided, I want to become an Iron Man. And we all came to this place where it took every single little itty bitty ounce of what we had to do something bigger than ourselves. And that defining moment, at least for me, that defining moment showed me that the only thing standing in the way of myself is myself. That moment made me a better artist. That moment made me a better mother. That moment made me a better lawyer. So all I'm saying is, you gotta find that moment and take that risk and be reckless. Find your Iron Man, whatever that is. You don't need to, you know, ride a bike across the state of California. I mean, go on to it's great. You don't even need to do an Iron Man, but find something. Find something that pushes your personal boundaries and watch what that does in your professional life. Take a risk, be reckless, and promise me one thing: be a badass. <laughs>